Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me here in Spain at Circuito Monte Blanco for a first drive in this beast. We're going to be going out onto the road and later here on track to discover all about the Mercedes AMG GT 63S e-performance. The e-performance is the flagship, the hybrid version. We're talking 843 horsepower from the four-door AMG. In fact, they've shortened the name. Gone is the four-door Formatic Plus Coupe. It is the GT 63S e-performance. It is what it's all about. We'll run through the technology, the battery, how all of that system works, how it feels as a driver in terms of the different settings and controls, and what you can select, what it's like to drive under full electric power. We'll go through all of the details. We'll head out for a drive on the roads there are some lovely twisties near to the circuit here in Spain and then later on fingers crossed with a little bit more sunshine because the weather today is all over the place we'll have some dry laps out on track to see what it's like when you push on hard with this so let's go through it in detail the Mercedes AMG GT 63S e-performance <laughs> There's quite a lot going on today. We have a fair few of the cars lined up in the pit boxes behind. We will be driving on track in a little bit though, but first I think we need to have a look around the car and I've been lucky to drive the GT 63S, the regular one if you can call it that, the 639 horsepower purely internal combustion engine version on track a few times, including at Circuit of the Americas in the USA, at Yas Marina in the Middle East. But today we're here at Sequito Monte Blanco. I've driven here one time before and very much looking forward to seeing what it's like in this because I think it goes without saying that it was already a big and heavy car and now it's a bigger and even heavier car with a lot of power. 843 horsepower. We've got that famous 4-litre bi-turbo V8 up front with the four-wheel drive system, the Formatic Plus, but now also with the hybrid setup with a 6.1 kilowatt hour battery that sits pretty much over the rear axle. You've still got the four-wheel drive, but obviously you've got even more going on in terms of the technology and how it's all set up. Now, visually, the model doesn't necessarily stand out a huge amount to the untrained eye. It could just be a large Mercedes saloon. It is a very expensive Mercedes saloon coupe, depending how you'd like to describe it. There are a few distinct touches for the e-performance. Namely, we've got a red badge for the S. It's still a GT 63S. The family includes the 43, the 53, the 63, the 63S, and now the 63S e-performance. You've obviously got those quad trapezoid tailpipes inside the carbon fiber diffuser down at the back. We also have a new set of wheels for this car, shod in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres that spot these inserts effectively, part of the visual effect, but also the aero that the car has. And obviously we've got carbon ceramic brakes, pretty much needed with the weight of it. Inside, lots of tech, but fairly understated. We've got the performance seats. We've got all the different driving modes and settings that we can run through in detail in a little bit, but basically a car that puts practicality and comfort pretty high in the stakes as well as that mix of performance alongside it. We've got the e-performance badging just alongside here under these side strokes, which are a visual cue for the e-performance badge. Obviously quite subtle. Most people wouldn't necessarily know the differences. Obviously, you know it's an AMG. We've got the iconic AMG style grill, originally launched as the Panamericana, but now just this traditional look that we see across the board. And we've got a lot of active aero and things going on as well. Lots of cooling that comes in through the front, some various flaps and things to keep the car and to keep that power plant as cool as possible. In fact, let me just open it up quickly and we'll have a look at the engine and what we have up front here. So to release that, we've got the usual catch just inside. Always have to try and find these things. There we go. Up front then, the four litre bi-turbo V8. The combustion engine makes 639 horsepower. We have the one man, one engine plaque with the person who was responsible for assembling that engine down the line at a falter back. But the GT four door was AMG's third in-house model. The SLS AMG came first, the GT two door models came second, followed by the GT four door coming after those as well. Obviously now AMG being responsible for even more, the SL, the new GT and plenty more down the line, but it brings in the Mercedes-Benz technology range. It brings in all of the assistant systems, the software, the functionality that we know combined with AMG Dynamics. Now obviously the biggest difference here is what we have in terms of the battery. We'll show a breakdown in the pit boxes a little bit later of all of this, but if I just open up the boot, you get a small sense 
of where all of this is because your battery pack sits right inside here takes away a little bit of the luggage space you still obviously got quite a lot but that's where your 6.1 kilowatt battery sits it allows you to drive the car under full electric propulsion for a total of 12 kilometers it's about seven or eight miles or so which is obviously not a huge number but primarily it's about performance in this instance it's about giving the car even more get up and go so let's hop in have a look at the interior then let's get straight on the road and go see what it's like to drive before coming back here for some track action a little bit later inside here then we're greeted by a fairly familiar mercedes-benz mercedes amg feel we've got the two large digital displays as i close the door we get a nice little animation graphic there as well we've got a host of carbon fiber around the whole of the interior the central console and the dashboard but there's one significant difference about this car to the normal amg gt four door which is when you start it up when you press this button you get an electrical whir all around you and you do not have the start of that engine we will get to that very shortly but effectively it defaults to comfort mode in comfort mode it's going to use the battery wherever possible it will drive under electric power if it can you have to turn it up if you want to get the engine into action we've got the new style steering wheel in fact with the two spokes on either side we've got the touch controls right below so if i turn this up one the engine starts we're into sport mode you can then go up into sport plus or all the way into race or you can go back in the other direction in fact and go even into electric or into individual at the moment we need a little bit more battery charge before we can drive under electric but the other thing that you can do about this with this selector is change the amount of regeneration of the battery so by pressing this control you then get the different stages of regeneration you can go up through these which we'll learn more about while being out on the road you have your touch controls on the other side which you can change exactly what they do for example into manual there or changing your suspension settings all with the color coordination as well and giving you the graphics on the main central screen to guide you through all of that or you can set up individual now a few other things about the interior it's a very nice place to be the red stitching that we have here to match with the red paintwork on the outside all of this carbon fiber across the dashboard the screen wakes up to know that you've reached out towards it we've got the touch screen you can interact with it in many different ways obviously lots of data amg screens performance data's and things that you can bring up through all of that in the center here we've got some decent storage as well tucked in there we've got the touch controls down the sides here which if you don't know are actually representative of the v8 engine you've got the eight touch screen controls in the v position with your gear selector positioned right in the center now one of the really intriguing things is how the gearbox works because we've got the nine speed amg speed shift gearbox the typical automatic but we also have the dual geared electric system which obviously have to very cleverly work while you're out driving so there's a lot to this i think one of the biggest questions is to find out what it's like to drive does it disguise its extra weight so let's head out hopefully with the sun very much on side right now go find some nice roads see what it's like there before we come back to take a closer look at the technology and drive it on track so let's go for now the fun of this then is into drive while we're in comfort mode and initially we're away under electric power now we have 12 kilometers of full range at the moment the battery is down to 40 or so percent so obviously that cuts away the total maximum but it does mean that you have this very quiet very effortless nature of driving 200 horsepower or so in here with the system effectively attached to the back it's very clever with the formatic plus system and the way this works with obviously distribution of the electric power but also the way it regenerates and recuperates that power as we cruise on out, there's a really strange background noise. This electrical flutter. But I suppose this is part of it, right? Oh, we'll mute the navigation. But what we do have is the very clever graphic that uses the camera and the overlays for the augmented reality, which I find absolutely awesome. The way that Mercedes do this as we go around the roundabout, for example, it makes this super clear which way that you need to go. Wait for the exit, wait for the exit and there the arrows move and guide us and we head out in that direction of course we've got the cameras all around the car in terms of systems this car is absolutely loaded to the brim with technology obviously you can spec up a lot of different things with the car itself we've got quite a sporty look with this jupiter red paintwork with the black and red interior but in terms of tech we've got the lovely burmester sound system all the carbon trimmings around the dashboard and in comfort this super 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 chill drive it's really quite fun the way it works and there i feel the regeneration under braking and obviously the weight is 
thank you to them for opening the barrier. The weight is a significant factor. If we go up into sport though, this will still, as you can hear right now, basically drive the car under electric. But when the engine kicks in and it's now running, you don't even hear it start. Obviously regulations mean that these things are now so much quieter than they used to be, that when the engine is running, blissfully unaware of it, you don't notice whether it starts or not. The graphic on the dashboard shows you with the rev counter, you, know, you can see that it's idling just over a thousand RPM at the moment. But other than seeing it visually cutting off and coming back on again, you have no idea that it's doing that. If you then do turn up and go through the different modes, let's say you're in Sport Plus, obviously that will more aggressively charge the battery. It will make sure that it can deliver more of the power as well when you put your foot down on the throttle. It will also, by default, change the suspension settings. It's instantly a lot firmer and adjust all of those dynamic elements to set the car up a little bit more. But we will take it easy as we cruise out from here. We're going to head towards some nice twisty roads. This is just the entrance road to Saquito Monte Blanco before we come back and really put the foot down and drive this thing in anger. I seem to have done everything possible to find the bad weather. We're up in the hills, we've got some very nice roads. Obviously we'll be going much more on the pace when we're on track. But driving here, what I found is that my preferred setup is Sport, because if you go into Sport Plus, it just gets a little bit edgy. Things like the feeling that you have from the shifting, it's not the smoothest in the world, and obviously the suspension gets firmer. You can configure all of those and set up individual, but it does charge the battery nicely. It's taken it up to 53% we've got at the moment, and it's kind of kept it at around that level, hopping in and out. But like I said, you don't really notice it happening. It just kind of does that in the background, and you as the driver just roll with it. Now, like with the regular GT63S, it does a fairly good job of disguising the weight of the car, but the curb weight of this thing is 2,380 kilos. So pretty much whatever they try and do, you're gonna feel like it's a big, big, heavy beast. It's a heavy car to begin with. It's a big car, obviously, and it's got lots of technology and comfort and safety things and that kind of stuff, which adds to the weight. But well, that's a lot. That's a really, really heavy thing. Now, if you do, for example, go into manual and start manually downshifting a little bit, you get a little bit of sound out of it, but it really is a little bit. It's not going to be giving you massive amounts of oral feedback inside here because regulations, regulations have done their best possible job to say, nope, you can't have fun anymore. It's got to be softer and significantly less exciting. Now, I talk a lot about this, not a big fan of these seats, the AMG performance seats. Unfortunately for me, they're just a little bit too solid, firm, uncomfortable, whichever word you'd like to use. I can't do a long journey in them, but seats are a very personal thing. What works for me is different for the next person. So I always recommend trying them out to get a feel for that. One thing that they, or at least this car seems to do better than my experience at GT4 doors is the calmness inside. There's less, I say that, but there's the noise of the rain pattering on the window and maybe that's hiding it at the moment, although we had less earlier. But I mean, from a road perspective, you know, it's a really comfortable car. It does a lot of things very well. It's a great place to be. It's got a lot of space back there. You lose a little bit of the luggage for the battery side of things, but I want to drive it in anger. I want to see how much it comes to life when you really push on hard. So let's see where this road takes us and we'll end up back at Saquito Monte Blanco. Just arriving back towards the circuit where unfortunately it is looking pretty gray and miserable. Let's hope that clears up before I'm out on track. Now, at the moment, we're back to 51% of charge, keeping it in sport. But what I haven't touched on is how the different regeneration modes work. And with the steering wheel button down here, when you press that, you have effectively four different settings. So zero is minimal regeneration. It kind of just coasts along. When you lift off, it just keeps cruising. And if you go all the way the other way, it becomes your almost one pedal style driving. Whereas you can see, I'm not touching the pedals and it basically, although we are uphill, brings us down to, does it bring us all the way to a standstill? No, it keeps you crawling at a couple of kilometers an hour, but more or less a standstill, obviously maximizing the charge and battery that you can build up out of it. Now, I think probably the best is somewhere in the middle, but it's always nice to have the option to be able to go through those different settings. If we go back into our well, sport mode and manual and drop some gears, as the rain is really starting to come out, but this is where, regardless, we have a lot of performance on tap, whatever the weather tries to do. Oh dear. <laughs> this is gonna be fun, but we've got PS4Ss at least, so the right tires for the occasion. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> so we enter back into the circuit. This is not 
what we want from this. Anyway, it will be what it will be. Let's head and go and get prepared to go out on track. This is always good fun. Here in the pit garages, we have a bit of a setup of the powertrain, so we can have a closer look at all of this. Obviously, we've got the 4-litre by turbo V8, we've got the suspension, we've got an example of that, we've got the gearbox sitting right behind, the uh, piping for the exhaust heading back, the drive shaft obviously given it's a four-wheel drive, then back here is where up top we've got the battery sitting down below it, the electric motor obviously giving that extra link directly in and keeping the weight effectively balanced out between front and rear as well, getting extra grip down on the rear wheels. And even if we come this away, over here, some examples of the cells and the high performance battery itself, the dummy battery series of cells, obviously the casing and the way this all sits in the back. And it's not exactly, you know, a light item could pick it up, but certainly at the heavier end, but gives you that instant traction, gives you that instant delivery of torque. And in fact, so much so, it's 150 kilowatts, which is the 204 horsepower. You get 320 Newton meters in addition to the 900 Newton meters. Those are peak figures. So it gives you a lot more off the line. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour, 62 miles an hour is just 2.9 seconds in a car that weighs the best part of 2.4 tons curb weight. That's pretty quick. Top speed, 316 kilometers an hour, just under uh, 200 miles an hour, about 195 miles an hour. So you get a lot of power out of this thing, a lot of performance out of this thing. And obviously that's thanks to having all of this with the cutaways that allow us to see a little bit more of how it all operates and how it all works. The weather has been absolutely tipping down. So we've had a bit of a pause, but it's about to be time to head out to do some laps. Thankfully, it's gonna be a very wet circuit, which should be kind of interesting. One thing you might be wondering about this though, there's a flap at the back, which is of course, when we open this up for the charging port. Inside here, you have your type two socket where you can charge up the car if you'd like to plug it in overnight for example charge it up make sure you've got 100 percent battery but one thing really interesting obviously is the regeneration and the charging cycles depending on your different driving modes because when you're in race mode for example you can't change the selector on the steering wheel to go between different modes the car does all of that and works it out for you to optimize track performance obviously that's the way it's been engineered it is still raining but i think in a second i'm going to be heading out go for a drive a bit of lead follow Bit of fun, no doubt, as the car comes splashing down the pit lane. Um, I realize now this might be a bad idea, but we're doing it anyway, let's go. Getting it started then, we'll get the electrical whirs, but this time, oh, we need to put this into Sport Plus, where you've got the different regeneration modes. We'll do, I think, two slightly slower laps. We've got 55% charge now, but we'll get a little bit more into it before we go up into race mode as I said. So you can set all sorts of different displays. You've got the track performance apps, track spec stuff that you can bring up here to have whatever display you would like from it. But this is going to be more an exploration of, I think the technology and the charging as opposed to out and out lap times in these kind of conditions. It's still raining right now and we know there's a lot of standing water, but let's go. As I said, we're in Sport Plus. Everything is set in here. Help the pit lane, lead follow. Gosh, this looks very, very, very wet and there's gonna be a lot of spray as well. But we've got a few laps to get to grips with this beast in anger. Keeping it in automatic certainly for the moment. Out the pit lane, out onto the track, tight T1. I have driven here once before, but let's get a feel for the grip levels. Okay, actually more grip there than I expected, considering, look at this, but you can hear the sharpness of the shifts very much on it. Sport Plus set up to have a good time, not necessarily the absolute full on attack. He says that's where you feel a lot of power. Obviously the torque fill you get with the electric motor in this completely, I think basically unique setup, very different to the other Mercedes-Benz models by having the engine up front with the four-wheel drive system and the electric motors at the back with the driven electric motor effectively linking back there. I got a bit sketched out by the standing water there. Yep, the brakes are certainly letting me know about it as well. These are some pretty difficult conditions out on track to work out and just get a feel for as we splash through some of the puddles around here. It's hard really to explain quite how quick that is. It's a big car and it really gets a move on very, very quickly considering. <laughs> just 
going to sit slightly to the side because of the um, spray. I think we're backing off a touch just because of the amount of water. It looks like the sun is starting to poke through though. Gosh. Onto the brakes. For T1, firm braking. I mean, we're not at Mach 10 at the moment. I mean, even if I stab the throttle, obviously traction control quite aggressively kicks in at the moment. You can put it into sport dynamic handling. Thankfully, the surface is grippy enough that even if I, on the exit of the corner, stab fairly aggressively on the throttle, traction kicks in and keeps everything basically in line. Gotta be so careful through here, it feels really, really slippy. <laughs> it's actually amazing how much grip it has, considering the conditions and the amount of water that we have standing on the ground here. You'd expect, you know, if I put my foot here, yeah, it barely wants to let me do anything silly at all. So we come around towards the end of the second lap, but this is where I'm gonna turn it up into race. We don't get to change the regeneration, it's actually kept it exactly as it was at the same level. But that's the nature of the system, right? Cleverly working out and anticipating what it thinks you want. Foot flat, the power delivery is immense. Up to 200 kilometers an hour, 240 or so, and I'm on the brakes, 240 kilometers an hour, and it is absolutely raining cats and dogs. Unfortunately, we've only got today, so I've just got to make do <laughs> with what I'm looking at in front of me. I'm really quite amazed by how much grip there is and obviously how clever the traction control system is to kick in to manage and make sure I don't do anything silly, like put it up into sport handling mode, where it's just going to allow a little bit more slip and a little bit more play. Now, one thing I haven't yet mentioned is the steering wheel, these new steering wheels. I find the grip just too chunky. Mercedes and AMG have taken a leaf out of BMW's book and I prefer a more precise, smaller wheel like the one in my GT Black series that feels so much more comfortable to drive with, especially on track. I'm just seeing through the spray, the brake lights coming on in front. I'm sorry not to be able to give it more of a, a punch today, but hey, this is something I cannot police. And feeling the understeer a little bit here with this water. I know it kind of brings the back around. The way it did that was actually quite interesting to, to feel, where it brings the back back around. Goodness me, look at this. Full throttle. And it almost launches through the gears. a little bit right because of the amount of spray that comes up as we get towards this very heavy braking zone at the end of the straight. It's really quite intense out here. I mean, this is absolutely mad. Feeling the ABS getting involved as well. But it's actually impressive how right now, for example, able to get such decent pace considering this. I mean, this is really, really slippy stuff. The scariest corner for me with the standing water up the hill with the weight. You have to remember it's getting this much weight around a circuit this fast in these conditions. Gosh, in the dry, this must be an absolute monster. And you know what, one other thing, fair play to Mercedes AMG, because this is the same car I drove on the road and no one has touched it since I came off the road. It's in the road specification, exactly as it was. And normally, we drive a different car on track at these kind of events, with different tires, with a slightly different setup. But this is exactly as it was, and that's pretty unusual. And they get a lot of respect for that. We're coming around for our cooling lap with the other cars now heading out as well. 
This is not what I was expecting <laughs> from a track day in Spain. Do you know what? The 4Matic Plus system kicking in there and just really punching the power through. So this has been an interesting experience, to be honest. <laughs> it's not very often you drive a track <laughs> with this atrocious weather. But hey, my only slot to go out I was certainly going to make the most of it. That's what's amazing though, it just clings on. Obviously if we we're in a rear driven car, I'd have no hope, but that instant torque that fills the gap, that delivers the power before you get the whole thing unleashed. Look at this, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. I've left the gearbox in auto where it does a very nice job. Obviously these things have improved immeasurably since the earlier days of automatic boxes and for a typical auto it still works really nicely obviously not quite as on it as a dual clutch but far from being a bad thing yeah we're definitely gonna make a quick exit to the pit box in a second oh my word you know what it was fun even if it wasn't as quick as it would be in the dry Sometimes you cannot control these things. It is what it is. And in we shall go back to the pit lane to escape from the rain as fast as possible. Wow. <laughs> Mad. Needless to say, that was quite the experience. I'm not entirely sure what feedback I can give. It is now clearing up, but the track is basically closed for the end of the day. So we had to do what we had to do. I would like to talk a little bit more about what we have here though, and I've shown it a few times with Mercedes products before, but things like, for example, the air conditioning vents. If you change the temperature, they go red. If you make it warmer, they go blue. If you make it colder, all of those lovely subtle details and touches that you find basically throughout the car. In fact, I'm gonna turn that back onto auto with the climate. But inside this system is where you have so many different things that you can change. Obviously this is the MBUX. You have track pace, which is where you can use the telemetry data to record your lap times. You have AMG performance, which is where you have all of these different displays and screens that you can choose to go full screen with and just make it look cool while you're driving, um, but also get feedback. For example, if the engine was running back into sport, uh, I'll go back out of this for the moment. You can see, for example, the live torque readout for your electrics and for your combustion engine. In fact, it's quite fun how it separates out those two sides. Your consumption, not looking great given we've just been out on the track and setting up your individual configuration on the uh, different dynamic driving modes as well. So you can set that exactly how you would like. Obviously you've got navigation, which works very, very well as you'd expect, the mobile phone, radio, media, comfort, all of your different settings, your lumbar, your side bolsters, your, you can set it up to your heart's content, whatever it is that you might want to change and see with that, your apps, your store, and your other car settings all in here, including your you know, assistance systems like your lane guidance assistance, your lane departure notification, the parking sensors, head up display, towing alarms, etc., etc., etc. And that's all in here, including your charging options, obviously now, because you can drive it like an EV if you want to charge it up and want to set it up in that way. And plenty, plenty more. And I always enjoy a car that offers you many different systems and having the ability to configure all of that. Similarly, on the driver's dashboard, you can go home uh, with this and set a series of different displays as well. So you've got all of the information that you could want to bring up there. You've also got a few different actual displays that you can have. So if we go into styles and display here, for example, you could have a more classic appearance from your dashboard as it all configures and updates. Or you could also have just to get back into the menu, standard. Let's have standard displays. Ah, oh, that looks like the classic style. As I said, learning as I go right now. I think we should have it in super sport because it fits the super sport nature and character. There's a lot of information that it gives us up here and you can also change what's on the side screens and the exact bits of info and data and from start and everything in here to have exactly what you would like to have on the screen in front of you when you're driving, but interesting to see that we're up to 86% charge after doing some laps in race. Obviously, if you're pushing on harder, you're gonna be using more of the electric, more of the battery, but given for a drive like that, we're never fully at Mach 10 because you can't be. 
it's charging the battery off both the regeneration when you're braking, but also off the combustion engine when you're not going at full speed to make the most out of it. Looking out the window, however, it's just got really nasty again. That's just happened very, very, very quickly. You have a lot of other controls and comfort elements in here, as you expect, good sized door pockets, mirror and light controls over to the side. Um, the shift paddles on the back of the wheel. I might prefer some slightly sportier, longer paddles perhaps, but they're mounted to the back of the wheel, uh, which I always prefer generally over being on the column. We've got decent storage cubby in here, wireless charging pad, USB-C port. Sorry, it's pretty dark in here at the moment, um, but in the back, a nice configuration for two passengers back behind us, more storage and charging ports and things going on. So spending most of the time inside at the moment, out of the rain, but that is an impressive car for sure. Does it make sense? Arguably not. It's big, it's heavy, and I don't think anybody said that the GT63S itself was short on power necessarily, but obviously this is pioneering technology. This is the flagship to lead the way to the system coming in at other entry points, the C63 with the new four-cylinder hybrid setup, for example. And in that instance, you can see how the technology is going to really impact and, and change things and obviously improve efficiency and all that side of it, but also offer us extra performance, e-performance along the way. And that's why something like this exists. I do have to comment on the sound though. If we turn the car up into race mode, it raises the revs, you get a little bit of sound out of it. And even just sitting here, it's actually charging the battery. We're up to 87% on it now, but regulations are regulations. And if I rev this, It's just a little bit muted, obviously overshadowed by the atrocious weather, but it, it doesn't give you that sound that I want a car like this to make. Anyway, alas, for now, I think that is pretty much going to be it from a very wet and rainy Spain, but a first drive in the AMG GT 63S e-performance, a first opportunity really to find out all about it, to see what it's about. I'd love to drive one in the dry, and I'd love to drive one probably somewhere like the Autobahn, perhaps a little bit more at home for a car like this, cruising, getting a good move on and being able to make more of a button advantage or benefit of what it actually offers and what the technology is all about. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. Thank you to Mercedes AMG as well for the opportunity to experience this today. That's it for now. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.